I'm Kathy Johnson of Pyramid of Potential, and this is video 21 of 60 of the Harnessing Learning Potential video series. Today we're talking about the tonic labyrinthine reflex. This particular reflex uh, emerges in utero and is integrated usually at about three months. Now, I spoke a bit in video four about this reflex. So if you haven't seen video four, you might want to go take a look at that and then come back and watch this one um, all the way through. So tonic labyrinthine reflex was the one where I mentioned um, the baby goes into Superman. And I was talking about the baby being a four month old baby doing that. And you know, you hold them over your head, they go into Superman, you put them down on the floor and they hold their head up in their arms and their shoulders. Uh, and this is that particular reflex. But I just said that the reflex that we're going to be talking about emerges in utero and is retained to about three months, which is earlier, obviously. That's because tonic labyrinthine reflex has two positions. The first position is fetal position. So when the mom is holding the baby like this, okay, the baby is all curled up and its back is round and chin is tucked and the arms are crossed and the legs are all curled up and crossed. That's the tonic labyrinthine position that we're describing here. And then the other position, the Superman position, that's actually the integration position. So um, let's take a look at the symptom list and what um, can happen if somebody with a tonic labyrinthine reflex um, is still retained. Well, they may have poor posture. It makes sense because if they are still kind of rounded and in that little fetal position somewhat, and they never went into that uh, Superman position and gained all those muscles in their neck, back, and shoulders, they're going to have a rounded back. Um, they also might have weak muscle tone. These are those kids who have the skinny, skinny arms and the skinny, skinny legs, and they're really weak. See, in order to get muscles in the extremities, we have to first develop core. And how do we develop core? One of the ways is by being on our stomach and building the upper body strength, that part of core. Uh, one of the symptoms could be a poor sense of balance. Now we're going to see that through several of these reflexes that the sense of balance, the vestibular system, um, gets developed during this first year of life. So we may see a dislike of sports and especially upper body sports. We might see some visual problems including convergence issues. This is the ability to um, see distance to near, distance to near. And somebody who has difficulties with this um, have difficulties crossing their eyes. And that it, it hurts or it's very hard to do or hard to uh, maintain. Now, when I was young, my mom said, don't cross your eyes or they're gonna stay that way. Well, yeah, a lot of our moms said that and actually we need to cross our eyes um, because in order to see, like I said, distance to near. And what is it that we do in school that we have to do that? Of course, it's copying from the board. So we need the ability to converge or cross our eyes so that we can focus near point, we can focus in um, and see here, but when we're looking in the distance, our eyes are straight. So we need that. Next is spatial problems. So these problems may be um, uh, fine point spatial problems where when we're writing, right, 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 uh, there's no space between the words. The, the children just don't really understand space, and so they just write lots of letters. They can't feel that space between the words. Um, they might write across the page, run out of space on the page before they run out of the word, and they squish in the word. Okay? You might, some of you might even still do that. Um, another thing you might see is that these people, when they're making posters, 
that all the information is squished into a corner. They don't feel the space that's around. Okay. Another thing, um, they might have uh, gross motor spatial issues. So this is the kid who is standing in line, and he's constantly like, bumping into the other kids. The other kids are like, stay away from me. And he just doesn't know where his own space is. Uh, and me, this was my strongest reflex. I would bump into furniture. I always had a bruise on my leg where I bumped into furniture up until the time I integrated my reflexes. So that's the spatial problems. Uh, next is poor sequencing, poor sequencing skills. And we talked about this a little bit with the necessity of being able to sequence to read, to write, and to do math. Okay? And then finally is poor sense of time. The ability to tell time and the ability to understand time. And we spoke a little bit about that. Uh, so a couple stories for you. Well, I told you a little bit about myself, so one more story. And this is about a little fourth grade girl who came into my office. And um, she looks up at the clock and she says, hey, it's 10.30. Now, this doesn't seem like much except that she didn't used to be able to tell time. My clock is a bird clock, so it doesn't even have numbers on it. Uh, she was able to figure out how to tell time on her own. She was in fourth grade just from what he, she had been taught before, and now that she integrated the reflex, it made sense to her. Also, um, I asked the parents when they come in, so what's new? I don't say, how's her posture? Check. How's her muscle tone? Check. I don't do that. I instead leave it open-ended, because I want to know if the changes that they have seen are related to the reflex. And so um, I said, so what's new? And the mom said, well, this morning, she said, we better hurry or we're going to be late for Kathy's. And she had never used those words before, hurry or late. She didn't really understand them. And then finally, the mom said that uh, the weekend before, they had gone to the grandparents' house. Uh, she stayed there with them, and she took some swimming lessons. And when she came home, she told her parents in great sequential detail exactly how to do all of those strokes something she was basically incapable of doing before. So um, that was her experience with integrating tonic labyrinthine reflex. Uh, in order to learn more about this and to see how to um, integrate it, uh, the next slide will have a couple of suggestions for you. Until next time, Kathy Johnson.